that fish, one bait right there, dude. One, one individual, he got it, he got the bait. I'm watching it track one bait across the surface. Those are the hardest fish to catch, oh my gosh. When they're keyed in and they have the bullseye on a piece of, you know, a silver side or a shad, man, you have to be so accurate with your cast to get it between the real bait and the mouth. Um, unless you're throwing, you know, like I said, that's why I built these small baits. Because if they're going to make a mistake and eat something that they're chewing on, this, they're going to chew that little 2.5. Okay, the real key on this bait, you know, it's so small. The way I built it doesn't have a bill or anything. So adjusting the height level in the water column is controlled by the speed of your reel and the rod position. So when you throw a bait out like this, you want to throw it out as far as you can. And right when it hits the water, if you want to V-wake it, right when it hits the water, start your reel with the high rod tip until that lure gets up to the surface. Once it hits the surface where you want it, speed up your reel and drop your rod tip and that'll keep that V-weight going across the surface. And sometimes that's the biggest key in getting these fish to commit is you have to have a true V-weight coming across. There's gonna be other times where they want it down about a foot or so or even 10 foot or maybe today we might catch them out of 60 foot of water. It's just time letting the bait fall and then making the right cast and adjusting the speed of the reel to the position of your rod tip. Like I said, I'll throw it out I'll start off high and then I'll speed up the reel and I'll drop it down and keep that rod tip right at top of the water and keep that reel going and I'll get a true top water V-wake with these little 2.5s. And that's how you adjust these baits. If you reel too fast, too fast with your rod tip high, these baits are just going to flip out of the water. But control it with your rod tip and your reel and you're going to see some real magic happen. Right now, we know there's some fish busting. They're, they're eating little stuff, but sometimes throwing just a little bit bigger bait. Come out here with a six inch spro bait I just came out with recently. And uh, see if we get one to come up and play with the little bigger bait. They are so keyed on the, the small stuff. <clears throat> but just like with the eight inch, you know, when you start picking out your baits and stuff, a lot of guys work baits way too fast for certain techniques. The 2.5 and the V-Wake, that's, that's money. That's a proven technique that's been going on since the 80s. When you go with the swim baits, unless it is a full on swim bait bite and you'll know, ooh, one, one ticked it. When come up and played. When you get on a swim bait bite, you'd be surprised the slower you work a swim bait, the percentages of you getting a fish to hit is gonna increase. And you'll know when it's quicker. You know when that bite's a lot quicker because what's gonna happen is you're gonna throw out, you're not even gonna be able to turn your reel handle. It's gonna hit and you're gonna go like this and it's, you're gonna be on. That's when the bite's quicker. You know, they're, they're active, they're looking for that style of bait. And you can work it faster and do your rip and pause it really puts some speed into it. But when the bite's slower on a, on a swim bait, what I'll do is I'll go right back to a slow roll. And with the six inch too, the bait's small enough where the energy you have to put into it to do a directional change, it's not like the big bait, the eight inch with the big bait rod where you're really ripping that thing to do a good 180. On a little six inch, a snap like this will actually turn that bait around. A snap like this, We'll turn the four inch shad around and a snap like this will do the two and a half. So, you know, proportionally you got to figure out the size of the bait you're working, how it really runs in the water column, creating that, you know, the realism part of the bait you're trying to fish. And you do the same movements that that fish would do in real life. And if you do that, like I said, those, those are the key things that I try to really pay attention to um, in catching these fish. I, I don't do anything crazy. I just try to create as natural environments, uh, natural angles where fish will be pushed up and, and pocketed into something where it creates a funnel. And like I said, when I do directional changes, they're usually against something. That's usually the best time, best time to do it. Like this swim bait, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna get around the outside of this point. We're gonna throw out into open water and bring it up into some of these cuts. And if you're gonna get a hit, that's usually where it'll happen. This is 
this is getting close to the one can one cast concept. Um, I preach a lot. If you if you take your time and take one cast on the right structure or cover, that's all it usually takes. That's that's really the key on becoming proficient. You know,